Welcome back everybody, I'm Ken and this is the Shop Mini RC and today we are looking at a broken PN Racing Anima Servo. Uh, we were running in our stock car, we got totally blasted and uh, after that it just kind of, the steering wouldn't move. It was kind of stuck. It, actually we were able to turn one direction a little bit, the other side it just wouldn't go and when you tried to move it uh, with the car off it was it would get stuck in one spot and at one point it actually just got completely stuck. So I want to walk through a servo here and this applies to a lot of servos not just this specific servo and if you've got a broken servo there's no reason to not open it up and learn what they're about and try to figure out what's wrong with it why did it break things of that nature um, a lot of times when you get hit real hard a servo doesn't usually just burn out it usually chips a tooth on the gears so we're gonna go ahead and open this up well we already opened it up so here's our screws i'm gonna go ahead and show you what's in here all right now whenever i do something like this if i've never seen the servo before or opened one up before and even if I'm working on one I've already worked on, sometimes I'll just take pictures so I can see what the servo gear sets, uh, how they were organized. That way, if I take it all apart or I pull something out and the whole thing falls apart, I've got a photo and I can look at it. Sometimes I'll take one from the top view and one from the side. That way I can know exactly how it goes back together. Now, on this guy here, I'm gonna pull this apart. I'm gonna show you exactly what's wrong with this. So there's a servo gear right here. And on this servo gear, we see we have a chipped tooth. All right, it's right there. Do you see that chipped tooth? Pardon my dirty fingernails, Evan. Got the grease. But you can see right there, we have a chipped servo gear, right? Now, the nice thing about this being the chipped tooth is that the way the servo works is it doesn't completely spin in 360, right? A servo only moves the gears only move a little bit, right? So like this, this is where our servo horn would go. It only moves about that much. And this broken tooth was facing inward, right? Inside here like this. I know it's tiny and it's hard to see guys, but I'm trying to, trying to show you. So this tooth right here that's broken, it was inside like this. So when you try to turn, you could feel it just get stuck and it didn't want to move, right? So... Being that this only moves a little bit, right? It only moves about, like I said, maybe, if we were to take them apart so you can see, maybe this much. So we could actually save the servo by flipping this gear all the way around so that the broken tooth is on the outside. You can see the broken tooth this way now. Put it back together and you've got a working servo where that tooth isn't broken. Now that only works if there's not other broken teeth inside you know, if, that, if a tooth in there broke, you might have an issue. You'd have to spin that to the opposite side. And it also matters if that tooth is contacting with a gear on the opposite side or something along those lines. Lucky for us, this gear sits right here on this pin here. And that broken tooth we can put to the outside and it doesn't actually touch anything else. There's no gear here that it touches. And so we should be able to have a working servo. Um, be aware that this rod goes into a potentiometer and you can see there's a uh, it's a keyed uh, rod here which means it goes in a certain direction so we need to make sure that and this all has to kind of go in at, all together at once I can't just stick this part in and then stick that gear on they have to go in together that uh, that gear has to slide over this while this slides into the servo um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and fit this in so this green portion is our potentiometer and you can see it's keyed Right, so this goes in here like so. Right, and that tells your servo board how far your servo is turned so that when you set your endpoints and stuff, that's that's what's detecting that, just so you know, if you didn't already. So we know that the center of that is going to be basically like this with the key going to the top side here. Right, this wire side. So we're going to go ahead and put it back together. We know our keyed flat side goes towards the wire, so it'll, it's going to go together like this, okay? But we've got to put our chipped servo tooth, servo gear, um, back in. So we're going to have to slide this guy out. Actually, pull this bearing off. Whoa! Pull that bearing off just to make this a little easier. So we're going to go ahead and pull this out. We're going to put our 
broken gear back in. Find our chipped portion. Also, make sure you clean out the gears in there. Make sure there's no, the chipped gear is gone because if you don't find that piece, um, it could get stuck in there and you could end up getting jammed again and it'll uh, it'll definitely not, not work very well if you've got that broken tooth still in your gears. So just try to find that little piece. If you can't find that little piece, then you just need to kind of inspect everything and make sure everything moves nice and smooth. Okay, so again, I know this is hard to follow because it's so tiny, but we're going to put our keyed shaft. We know that's going towards the front of the servo, and this is going to go here. So you can see our chipped portion is away. And then we'll take our servo, put our keyed portion in, and our chipped portion in, see that? We'll slide them on together. You gotta kind of work it just a little bit because of your potentiometer. You wanna make sure that key kind of gets in there. All right. Oh, our gear moved a little. Um, so we're gonna pull it back out and we're gonna move our gear a few teeth over and put it back in again because we want that broken tooth to be as far away from where it's actually touching on the gears. So there we go. So here's our chipped tooth. And ideally it's going to be exactly opposite of where it's contacting the gears, but this is close enough, I think. And go ahead and put it all together. Now this isn't going to move smoothly, smoothly kind of without the, the top on, because if you try to move these and the rods are not set into the housing, it's not going to want to move very smooth. So you can hold it together. Make sure it's nice and tight, and then you can try moving it just a little bit. And I can feel it. It moves pretty smooth. Feels like a normal servo. Doesn't get stuck. So we're going to go ahead and screw this all together. We're only going to actually put in two screws. Uh, one here and one on the opposite side. Just to hold it together while we test. And then if everything seems to be working, we'll put the other two screws in. That one. We'll do the opposite side here. And let's go ahead and plug it into our car. Now this isn't the car that got blasted, although this one did get blasted. This is our Atomic SZ2, and we're waiting on a part for the back. We actually had to replace this uh, pivot mount, and one of the pivot balls got lost. So we have this one, but we don't have this one, so we had to order new pivot balls. All right, we're plugged in, and let's go ahead and turn it. Oh, look at that. I don't, here, I'm going to hold it as still as I can so we can zoom in. Look at that. Nice and smooth. So we now have a servo that's a good backup servo, or we can throw it in another car that's maybe a fun car, or, you know, I would trust this enough to be able to put it in one of my uh, cars that, you know, I care about. Because I, I believe that the only problem with it was that one chipped piece. Oh, you know what? We're dumb. We forgot a bearing. Either way, it's working. We're going to get it back apart our bearing in there and uh, we'll be good. So let me do that. While we're apart, I just want to look at it again because it was centered, right? We electronically had it centered when we unplugged it and our chip's tooth is right there. So, I mean, unless we're putting major endpoints into this thing and turning super sharp, like maybe for a drift car or something, that might be an issue. Um, but for this, it should be just fine. And actually here, let's go ahead and plug it in while it's apart and I want to show you it working here. There you go. And you can see the max it moves. Again, if you keep an eye right here, I'm trying to stay super still. You can see that's the max, at least for the endpoints that we had on that car or on this car. Anyway, we could probably turn it up even more and you would get quite a bit more before that chipped tooth would actually contact the gear. So I don't think it's ever going to contact the gear. And I think we are good. We're going to run this in a car and should work. No problem. Get our bearing back on, get our housing back on. And these servos aren't cheap. Like th this is a $60, $50 or $60 servo. So being able to fix it is super helpful. Um, I don't think you can buy rebuild kits, new gears for these PN servos. So if you ever break one, just make sure you keep it because you never know. Like even if um, you fry the electronics or something, those gears are good. And maybe somebody someday will need those gears um, or even yourself. 
you can always just swap out that one broken gear and save yourself 50 bucks, 60 bucks. We're super excited that we were able to get this thing fixed. I was worried that it'd be multiple chips teeth on multiple gears. And if that happens, that's kind of a bigger problem because you can't just turn all the gears around. Sometimes you can, but you know, depending on what gear broke and where it broke, it can be an issue. But this one seems like it'll work fine. So just goes to show, you never know. You might as well open them up if they're broken anyway. Never throw anything away. We, we almost never throw away stuff because you never know when you need a part from it or when you can fix it. There we go. If we had a servo horn, you could see better. But it was working great. Oh, here we go. Servo horns. Look at this. If this is a PN servo horn. Let's see. Nice, it is. Beautiful. All right, guys. Well, I hope this helped you. Um, if you saw anything that you want to make a comment on, put it down in the comments below. Maybe help somebody else out. Maybe we missed something. Um, we just kind of go in there and figure it out and hope we can fix it. And looks like this one we might have had a success with. Um, please make sure you like, subscribe, share. If somebody else has this same issue, share this video. That's one of the best ways to help the channel out is share the videos that you find helpful or when somebody else needs help and you know we've got a video for it, share that video with them. All right, guys, get out there, run your cars, crash them, smash them, and bash them. Hopefully you don't break any expensive parts. Why don't you comment down below, fixed servo. We'll put fixed servo in the comments below so I know you watched the whole thing. And uh, yeah, have a great week or weekend, depending on when you're watching the video. Take care, guys. Thank you.